So today we have kind of a fun session. Um, we're going to integrate the new AI into the session as well. I don't know if you guys have um, got it up and running on your computer. I, I know that some people don't have the premium version and unfortunately open AI, open AI is, um, there's a wait list for it right now, but um, if you have got it, uh, maybe just uh, raise your hand so I know how many people have got the um, open, AI, open AI at the moment. Sweet. There's a few people, so that's good. All right, so we're gonna get, we're gonna kind of go along with the order book analysis alongside the AI together. So I'm gonna share my screen. So we're going to do like an overview of this platform. This platform is called trdr.io. It's um, one of the main platforms that I use for my visual research. I think it's one of the best, um, you know, sort of visual research platforms out there right now. You have like a whole wealth of different indicators from you know um order book start indicators to open interest funding all of that good stuff but they've actually um created their own proprietary indicators on this platform so that you know there's there's a lot more sort of interesting things that you can do with it plus the uh developers are really really active if you have an idea, then a lot of the time, if it's a good idea, they'll actually implement it onto the site. So um, as, as, as sort of your training develops, um, you, know, you may begin to have your own ideas which you could bring forward to the developers. So that's very, very cool. So just to give you uh, a sort of brief overview of what we're looking at here, um, we have our trading view widget, which is here. And um, we have our you know, sort of drop down uh, indicator um, tabs here. And then on the right side, we have our watch list. So I can just easily click through. I can change it by Delta, uh, 24 hours. And, um, you know, I've basically can just quickly go through to see what's interesting here. And then we have our order book depth, which I'll explain exactly what it is in a moment, but just, just to show you what it is for now. Um, we have 0% order book depth, um, the different exchanges on the left hand side with, um, the 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 pair so you've got the logo which so this logo represents binance and then you have the TUSD so we're on Bitcoin TUSD Bitcoin USDT and then we have the Bitfinex logo and then all of the other exchanges coming down here and then coin M stands for coin marginalize so these are perpetual contracts. So coin marginalized contracts and USDT contracts. And then it goes down throughout the other exchanges. And then it goes on to futures here, um, which are basically contracts that expire. And then again, you've got USDT, coin marginalized, which is on BitMEX, Deribit, OKEX, Etc. So this is the different levels of order book debt from zero to twenty five percent. So this is how deep the bids or offers are in the uh, in the actual uh, how how far away that those bids or offers are 
uh, from the price. And then down here, we have the order book in a more sort of visual representation, um, which is like handy to look at it this way because you can see, you know, where the, you know, the different amounts, the total, um, where the bid is and price. And just by eyeballing this now, I can see that there's a lot of bids here at 35,000, for example. So you've got this big sort of candle, which is pointing out here and here as well. So I'll get into why that's important in just a moment. And then here we have order book changes. So we're constantly having orders being added and subtracted. And you can see from this widget here, um, you know, where, where those bids or offers are being added or subtracted, which, you know, could be useful for things like spoofing or, you know, um, seeing where, uh, points of interest are, uh, which I'll, I'll get into in a moment. So I just want to define what order flow, um, you know, what the definition of order flow is. Um, so order flow is the cumulative buying and selling orders that are executed in the market. It's real time. Um, it gives you the flow of any sort of asset here. And we can look at it in various, various different ways. Um, and I think it's really, really crucial um, to understand order flow in order to recognize lots of different things from, um, you know, liquidity analysis or when, 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 when the price action is getting exhausted, uh, market sentiment just generally just helps a lot with informed decision making. Um, so the components of order flow consists of buy orders. So these are bids. Um, these are orders placed by traders looking to purchase an asset, or it goes without saying, and sell orders, you know, offers or asks. And these are just placed by traders looking to sell an asset. Um, so let's dive into this and just have a look at what TRDR has to offer in terms of the different styles of visualization for the order books. We're going to start with my favorite, which is the order book depth overlay, and it's an aggregation. So we're just going to Click that. Now, what we're seeing here is the order book now shown to you in a very visual way. If you're a visual person like myself, this is a lot easier to look at than, say, this. And when I'm you know, trading real time, this, this is far more digestible. If you know what I mean, it's just, you know, we can see clearly that there's strong bids here and there's strong offers up here. So we can go into the settings and we can have full customization of how we would like to see the order book. We can look at it all. So we've got complete aggregate, spot, or perpetuals. And you can see that it's changing. We have a slightly different view on each one. I like to look at all. So I'm looking at spot and perpetuals. We can then go to the style. And we can change the colors. If you don't want red because it's 
you know, emotionally triggering in some ways. Um, you can turn it to gray. I actually like to do that. I like to just, you know, change the colors around. Just depends what you like. Um, you can even add the minimum ratio, the, the, the ratio minimum bids or the minimum asks, um, which is pretty cool. And you can also choose the depth. So if we wanted to look deeper into the order book, we would get more information. So now we're seeing the bids deep in the order book. And this is up to 25% away from the price. So if we measure that down, it's 25% away. So these little shades that you see above the price are also directly uh, representative of how far away those bids or offers are from the actual price. This, 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 is, this has significance, um, which I'll get into a bit later. But it's important to know, you know, how, how deep these bids or offers actually are. Um, and, and is it, is it, is it real demand? Is it, is it just sh short, short term demand? Or is there real demand deep in the order book? This can really change how I look at the market. You know, it could change, it could change. Like here we had really deep demand from all different levels. So this is all the way down to zero, zero to 25% of the whole entire order book. This is a much stronger look than say this, where there is no demand at all. In fact, there's the opposite. There is supply. There's people trying to sell up here, thinking that the price might go up to fill their offers. And what happens? The price subsequently falls. And you can see through this visual representation if there is demand or not. So very, very important. Um, And we're going to move on now to the second visual representation of the order book. This is going to be the order book top levels. It's basically the same thing, but now we're seeing the order book bids and offers um, where they where they are exactly. So you can see through the lines on the chart, um, depending on how bright they are. So the brighter they are, the bigger the, the offer or the bid. So we can actually go into the settings and we can customize it. So let's say if we want to make it really bright, we can go to the largest on the bid side. And just for the sake of the exercise, I'm going to turn it into blue. So I'll we'll turn it into blue, or, or let, let's turn it into yellow. I'll we'll turn this one into yellow as well. See if we've got any yellow ones. There we go. So now we've just sort of defined that whenever we see a yellow one, these are really, really big bids in the order book, which can be very, very useful to see what the whales are doing. Now, typically, when you see really, really big bids or offers like this, um, it's often market manipulation. So you can see here, this guy he didn't really have that much intention to long it. 
the price wasn't going to come anywhere near it. The bid was just way too big and it caused the price to absolutely rocket to the upside. So it depends what the objective is sometimes. You know, sometimes they just want to launch their leverage positions upwards. When you start looking at the market like this, you begin to see that it's often driven by algorithms. We can now change this to yellow as well, just for the sake of the exercise. And we can see it on the offer side as well. So whenever these big yellow blocks come up, the price always comes down. So it's good to define it. It's good to check it out. You can see we had some price suppression here from some really big guys. Some price suppression here, I guess they didn't, you know, this could be the exchanges. Maybe too many people got levered up on this and they wanted to liquidate some people. So they just whack up a huge offer here. And then it, as soon as it disappears, the price absolutely rockets. So they have the power to put the breakers on the price action simple as they have a power to do it if you've got the money you've got the power look at this one they put the breakers on this when did they bring it when did they bring in these offers they brought it in as soon as these highs were made they know these are not going to get filled. The price action tries to go up to it, just gets repelled, slam down, slam down, slam down, and down we go. So it's very, very useful to keep an eye on what the big fish are doing. And this is one of the ways to do it. Okay, so next. Um, well, we'll just quickly go into the settings again of this. So with this, you can, again, you've got full customization of this. You can, um, you know, look at a deeper price range of up to 10%. So we can now see 10% away from the price, what these guys are doing. So you can get a, a bigger picture of you know what what games are being played look up here now that we see we had not only a huge um offer here but we also had one 10 percent away from the price so they put it they they gave it a double whammy here and they put it so far away from the price that obviously there was no intention for that to be filled like who who puts you know a massive uh, 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 offer ten percent away from the price unless it's just to manipulate the market back down again? So this is always super interesting. I love looking at this. I look at this almost daily. Um, you can't, you know, I wouldn't trade without this. This is. This is super important. So we're going to go to the next um, representation of the order book. Now this looks a bit messy, but this is basically the spread. This is the spread between the bids and offers. Now, just as an exercise, um, which uh, if, if you were going to build an algorithm, where would you want the algorithm to trigger your short? Paste it, paste it, paste it into the uh, the comments. Have a look at the chart, and and where what what number would you would you want the algorithm to potentially 
answer is short just based off of this data here. There we go, 85 to 90 million. Good stuff. So if we stick this here at around 85, let's see what we get here. Now, this is the order book depth aggregation 0 to 1%. So this is really, really close to the price. This is a sudden burst of incoming offers that have come in. And it's flow that is very, very immediate. But it may not be representative of the overall market flow. It's only representative of very very short term burst of flow because it's, it's just one percent away from the price in order to get a broader market perspective you have to look deeper you have to understand what's going on a lot deeper but let's start with this for now if you were to maybe create a scalping strategy then perhaps you'd look at zero to one percent because it's immediate order book pressure and we can just pick our horizontal here and just mark these out as potential areas where we'd want to short. And they've resulted in around 1% moves coming down sometimes 0 0.5 three percent there and then you know on this one here five percent so that's pretty handy to see. But how does it look if we have a look a little bit deeper into the order book? We can then increase this all the way up to 25%. And now we're given a very, very different view. actually see that deep into the order book we have a strong amount of demand and that the bids are actually dominating it's not until we get to around here that the offers sort of get into parity with the bids and start changing the game. So the demand just dropped off. And what happens here? It's a big, big dive. I had a big dive to the downside. So looks pretty good all the way up until this point. If you're just following this alone, it's not a bad trade. You're a long way up until here, until finally this dropped off. You got out here. Now you're kind of waiting for that spread to sort of look healthy again, because as of right now, it's just come out of that sort of unhealthy look. And it still doesn't look great. Could look better, although it's looking a bit better. Um, I'm going to go into another sort of advanced concept 
um, in the order books called Delta. It's the order book Delta concept. So the cool thing about this is that you can actually go all the way to the style and you can just switch it over to Delta. So now we have another look. Um, so the order book Delta is a concept that involves analyzing the net change in the order book over a specific uh, percentage. And it measures the difference between the volume of the buy orders, so the bids, and the sell orders added to the order book. So it offers insights into the directional pressure in the market. Now, if we just, for the sake of the exercise, bring this back to 1%, we can see a lot clearly, you know, the, the, the difference there. Um, so, the de so the delta value, which is this here, is the difference between the buy order volume and the sell order volume. A positive delta indicates a dominance of buy orders, suggesting bullish sentiment, while a negative delta suggests bearish sentiment with a dominance of sell orders. So it's useful for the following reasons. Um, market sentiment analysis. So the order book Delta provides a, a sort of a more nuanced view of market sentiment. It's going beyond basic price movement to understand the underlying buying or selling pressure. It also helps you to predict price movements. By analyzing Delta, traders can anticipate potential price movements. For example, a constantly positive delta can foreshadow an upward price movement. So that would be more relevant on a deeper order book depth. You can see we've got a prolonged positive delta here, which then gave us a subsequent upward movement. Whereas here we have a prolonged negative delta and a downward movement preceded it. So this is showing us continued sell pressure, continued selling. And then that, of course, is inevitably going to create a downward move, especially during a you know, a, a point of consolidation. So if you identify a point of consolidation, we really want to know, are we formulating uh, an accumulation pattern or a distribution pattern? You know, is it a Wyckoff reaccumulation pattern or is it a Wyckoff redistribution pattern? Well, this can provide insanely useful insights into whether or not it's reaccumulation or distribution. Um, so when when building out strategies, um, it's important to identify you know, potential reversal points by observing the extreme delta values. So what you want to do is you want to go back and you want to have a look and see these extreme delta values and mark them out. Mark them out on your chart and, and, and have a good look at them because um you're gonna see this again and again and if you ever see something like this 
you're going to want to buy hand over fist. This is the, the this is the best possible thing you could ever see. So it's full blown accumulation. Whereas this is kind of troubling. Here, kind of troubling. Troubling too. And the fact that the order book keeps fitting out is kind of troubling to me. And makes me think that we're coming towards the tail end of its upward movement. Especially if we could, if this comes down more and goes negative once again, you know, maybe we come up here again and it goes negative. I don't want to see that for continuation. It's not, not the best look. If it, you know, this, it can still go up. You know, for this positive delta, but the, de the demand is obviously dwindling as the price is going higher and higher and higher. And so eventually it'll get to a point where there just simply isn't any demand anymore. And we have to come back to the demand areas. And, um, yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> the order book. Delta is obviously is a powerful tool, but again, it should not be used in isolation. I've made this mistake before where I got really, really obsessed with the order books and, you know, I tried to just trade purely off of order books and it, I mean, my trading was, was good, but it wasn't optimal. Um, you know, you get a little bit too obsessed with the order books then you end up getting chopped around as well actually because there's lots of nuances to it and it takes a so quite a while to really grasp the different concepts of the order book and to to learn it um so so don't worry if like this is a bit like overwhelming to begin with like the more you look at it the more you get a feel for it the easier it will become. Um, the other, the other things that you, you know, really need to be taken into account um, is obviously, you know, news and fundament, fundamental factors that can quickly change how this order book looks. For example, you know, we could have, you know, negative delta here, and. Um, you know, I, I often can predict that bad news is going to happen during these times, but there can be the occasion where something completely out of the ordinary happens and there's some good news and this can just pump. And, you know, it, it's sort of in the, in, the, in the face of all this sort of um, distribution, it just pumps and it, and and there's no rhyme or reason to it. It was just, you know, a news event came out, ETF was approved, whatever it was, and there was just this big knee jerk that came up. And this is especially the case of altcoins. Uh, Bitcoin has a lot pure flow, but with altcoins, you know that that potential for market manipulation or erratic movements. Um, can happen so to bear in mind um, that as well um, yes yeah, so I just I'll just pause there to allow any questions before going on to the next next one because uh, I know it's a lot to take in uh, Samir go ahead yeah thanks uh, that's a very interesting uh, tool can you just re-explain what it means in elementary uh, school language when it goes red, this order book depth uh, indicator, but the market price goes up? Because I still don't get that. Sorry, I don't quite understand the question. Uh, Could you... So so you have the Bitcoin price on top and they have the, the second, uh, se second thing. Yeah, this one, the order book depth. And I understand when it's green, you said that was a really positive if the price is accumulating, but you also explained the scenario when it goes red, but the price still 
goes up. How does that work? Because in a delta that's red, how I understand it based on what I've heard so far, is that there is uh, less uh, le less demand or le yeah less demand, I suppose. So how can the price go up? It, 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 in, in what circumstance? Yes, so let's see the 13th of November. Uh, okay. Oh, is this the same, same, same here, right? And November uh, 13th, where you have that red uh, spot. Ah, yes. Yeah, do they do they always like yeah what, what i don't understand if it's if it's red does this automatically means that the price goes down or is there also a scenario where it's red and it goes up because i think you just explained that but that's what i didn't get ah okay so right now what we're seeing is um there's a lot of selling pressure in the deltas there's a lot of market selling happening here um so this is just a spread between market buying and market selling that's what the delta represents sort of like the ratios and this is cumulative so it's showing you that there's more market selling going on in this area than there is market buying that's why we're seeing the red delta sort of prolonged here and typically when you see this you will see the price movement come down but what I was trying to say is that there are, in some unusual circumstances, where a news event might happen, like, you know, an ETF will be approved, and this will just pump. Um, it, and, and, and that doesn't happen very often. But I mean, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, like, just be aware that, um, you know, certain news-driven events could change the dynamics of this very, very quickly. Um, so um, while this is like a very, very powerful and useful indicator, most of the time uh, you can trust in what it's telling you. Uh, there's, uh, there's just that, you know, you know, freak uh, case or exceptional case where you may, you may, uh, uh, you know, see, see this shift very, very quickly. And that, and if that happens, you know, it's good to look at this and see, you might see a sudden burst of market buys coming in, you know, very similar to what you see here. And then the price just did a full, full Dalai Lama to the upside. Um, so, you know, that's the, that's the nuance to it. And, 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 and Ash, you also said, and then I said, uh, saw Zach confirming, like if it goes green and it's cumulative, then you really want to buy. but uh, and what does that actually mean? Because if the delta is positive and there's a lot of buying pressure, that yeah, kind of si si sounds kind of obvious that yeah, the price will go up, right? Or yeah, I mean the price is just driven by um, supply and de de uh, supply and demand dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> this this is this book is representative of both spot and perpetuals. I understand that maybe you're thinking in your mind, but if everybody's going long, then why is the price going to go up? You have a sort of contrarian mindset, perhaps. But I mean, it depends, you know, like if everybody's going long on perpetuals, then yes, you can see a, um, a kind of a diversion and you could see the price subsequently come down uh but if if everyone's going long on spot then you know you that's a much purer flow and that usually drives the market in the in the direction that you want to see it so this is you know a good representation of what the spot market's doing um and and therefore you can kind of you know gauge what is is sort of legitimate um buying pressure uh, which is going to drive the price up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I have many more questions, but let the other go first. It's very interesting. <laughs> okay. All right, no worries. Um, yeah, Cheryl, I, I, I saw you were next. 
Um, yeah, this kind of is on the same line. Um, on Coin Analyze, there's a indicator that shows, you know, the order book uh, depth as well, and then it also shows uh, uh, divergence. Um, and I kind of been looking at that, and this is similar. Um, and is that something that you would um, look at uh, a divergence to kind of indicate a uh, a change and uh, um, of where the market's going? Yeah, to a degree. I mean, you could you could technically look at this as a potential divergence to this price movement that's going up here. Um, okay. You, know, you you could look at that as a as a divergence, and it's actually not a bad way of looking at it at all. Um, to sort of train your eye for these types of divergences. Uh, I actually like that. That's that was a good question. Yeah, and actually, like I said, I there's a the same indicator on Coinalyze. It actually has a an extra feature that shows you know when there is divergence. Uh, and right. I'm not on it now, so I can't tell which one it is. So, but um, I, I find I found that useful to look at. Yeah, no doubt. Um, we'll have to we'll have to dive into that on the next one. Yes, <laughs> I know. All right, thanks, Asher. Cheers. Mm -hmm. uh, chance. Yeah, uh, two questions. The for this order book depth, is this also looking at all the things in terms of like perp spot, all of that stuff? Is that a setting thing too on this one? Yeah, this is this is everything. This is aggregate spot futures and perpetuals all rolled into one, um, which I think gives you the best sort of representation of what the the broader market is doing um there are like different strategies that you can apply where you may want to just like isolate spot or perpetuals you know if you're looking to do like reversal trading then perhaps you would just want to look at perpetuals because when perpetuals start getting real wild and crazy um on on the market buys then that's usually a good spot to be a contrarian so it really depends on like uh, how 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 you're developing your strategy. And then the other question was, when you did the switch from the one percent to the twenty five percent, what is that percent? Is that some kind of weighting? Is the is the depth? So it's the depth. Um, it's the depth away from. The price so you can have one percent depth away from the price or you can have 25 percent depth away from the price and it's showing you the stacked bids or offers within that percentage of depth and that gives you a different viewpoint on the market like you can the way I like to look at it is like you've got short term, you've got short term demand, and then you've got mid term demand, and you've got long term demand. And the, the the more demand there is in each one of those categories, or the more uh, supply that there is in each one of those three categories, the more powerful uh, that 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 indicator becomes because um, if it's just like a ton of bids stacked all the way down from zero to twenty five percent, that's representing a huge amount of demand from the broader market. Whereas if you just have a a, a bit of demand from zero to one percent. Okay, that might push up the price short term, but is it 
representative of a lot of demand in the broader market no it's not it, it just uh it's just short term demand it's you know people who are just speculating in a range or whatever you know like you can see that we've got a lot of short term demand here and the price is just chopping and you know we're not really able to sort of get out of this choppiness because it's flip flopping all over the place whereas if you come down here you've got big boy demand big demand you know all the way 25 percent deep into the order book and we've clearly just can't break this little range here uh, it's just too much and then you know we've got an accumulation that happens and then just a massive move to the upside subsequently so you could kind of like you know as a as a as a risk manager um you know that 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 used to work for a hedge fund um i would use this to determine how much exposure i would have to the market so you know down here i would want to have you know maximum exposure when it comes up to here i want to start cutting that exposure drastically i don't want to be balls deep when there's not much demand it doesn't make sense you know it's like it's dangerous so yeah just to, it, it depends how you how, how, how you trade um um you know like like i with right now i always want to have some exposure to bitcoin so you know i would be looking to increase and decrease my exposure depending on my systems so you know this is how i do it basically this is one one of the elements that would determine whether or not i would want to increase or decrease my exposure um so yeah there's there's that hope 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 that answered your question yeah christopher thank you cool um let's see so we're going to analyze market orders through um, what Cheryl was mentioning earlier, which is basically a cumulative volume delta. Um, and we're going to we're going to actually have a look at that and see a little bit how it how it um, how it looks different to the delta. They're slightly different indicators. So when it goes up to here, and it's sort of this greenish blue up here, and it spikes, that's a lot of market buying happening here. Now what I've done to really, uh, to really sort of uh, uh, make a, uh, an example of how this is different to the order book uh, depth is I've turned this into perpetuals. So this is just perpetuals. So we're seeing a lot of market buying here. So what are the characteristics of market orders? Um, Market orders are executed as soon as possible, making them a tool for traders who prioritize speed over price control. It can also be representative of people that just want to get in really quickly because of a news event, or maybe they just simply have FOMO. Whatever it might be, it could, you know, it, it could be just part of their algorithmic execution. Um, also, the other characteristic is price uncertainty. Since market orders are executed at the best available price, the exact transaction price uh, uh, can be uncertain, 
especially in volatile markets, you know, you can have slippage and things like that. It can also impact liquidity. Market orders consume liquidity from the order book as they're filled against existing limit orders, bids or asks. And the reason why market orders are important in trading is because, well, usually it's just like, it, ref it reflects urgency, you know, market orders reflect, reflect the urgency of the trader's intent, indicating a strong desire to enter or exit a position regardless of price shifts. It's also useful as a sentiment indicator. Now, this is where I really, <laughs> this is where I like it because I like to take advantage of people who are FOMOing. Now, let me show you something really interesting here. <clears throat> so these are, these market orders here are people FOMOing like crazy. Look at this. Buy, 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 buy. Where are they buying? Here. What's our order flow saying? Our order flow is saying the opposite to the market buyers. So we've got between 0 and 1%. We've got a big sell order, but the market, you know, the, the people on perpetuals are market buying. So we have an incredible example here of divergence between what the order book is saying and what people are actually doing. And remember, these are not filled orders. These are offers above the price. These are filled orders. These are market buying orders. So this is the, the you know, this is the important difference between the two. <clears throat> yeah, so stark contrast between the behavior of these two market participants. We can see it again here. Plebs are FOMOing in and market buying. Binance's order book algorithm is putting in the offers saying, we're going to liquidate you. And what happens? Price comes down, liquidates all the plebs. So pretty important. Um, you know, you could probably build an automated tra trading algorithm just off of this alone. It's an interesting strategy. Um, so again, with this, you can go into the settings. We can flip it over to spot and you know, we can see sort of different, different sort of behaviors and things like that. Um, so yeah, pretty interesting. Um, we can, um, so we can, we can basically look at this as, um, you know, a couple of strategies that you can use with this is uh, momentum trading. So you can use market orders to capitalize on emerging trends uh, identified through the delta analysis. Um, you can also use it for stop loss and take profit. Uh, market orders are often used for stop loss and take profit. So you can also see that you know some of this may not be you know, some of this can be uh, 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 stop losses being hit as well. So it's not it's not just people going long; it's people getting stopped out as well. Um, you know, people were short here; their their orders turn into market buys. So you can also see uh, with this, you know, areas where people were getting stopped out, and and usually where people, you know, areas where people are getting stopped out. 
are usually good areas for you to go um, uh, long or, or, or short. Um, so the, the objective of this is to, you know, combine <clears throat> the analysis of of the delta and market orders to provide a, you know, a comprehensive view of the market dynamics and to create trading strategies. And you know, as we've gone through, you know, we've got the correlation between the market uh, orders and the delta. So a positive correlation, both delta and market orders indicate buying pressure. So when they're both together, that can be a signal of a of a bullish trend, while well, a negative correlation um, could suggest a bearish trend. And then, of course, you can have then contrarian signals. So when the delta in the market order gives contrarian signals, such as a positive delta with a surge in market sell orders, these scenarios require careful analysis to understand the underlying market dynamics, like the example that we show, people getting stopped out, um, you know, people getting FOMO, things like that. So this really helps with timing and execution. Um, so the timing of orders in relation to changes in Delta can provide clues about market momentum and possible reversals. Um, so other strategies that you can use for combined analysis is trend confirmation. So you, you can use delta and market orders together to confirm the strength and direction of the trend. For example, a rising delta with an increase with an increase in market buy orders can confirm a bullish trend. Um, and then when you're looking to identify reversals, sudden changes in delta accompanied by large market orders in the opposite direction can indicate potential um, market reversals. And so that, that's basically how, how I use it from a practical standpoint. Um, Cheryl, yes, go ahead. Cheryl, you have a question? No? Okay, moving on. Unmute, unmute, oh. unmute, sir. <laughs> um, okay. The order book depth um, indicator, um, also at the lower uh, part of your screen is the order book depth that you opened up with. Um, are those basically the same, just uh, a different way of showing the same information? The order book depth. Um, okay. Which, yeah. And then at the bottom of your, so yes, the order book depth there, and then at the bottom of your screen, um, where you have the order book, and that's the first one you opened up with. Ah, uh, this one. Uh, yeah. So are those basically um, showing the same information, just um, in different styles? Correct. Yes. <laughs> this is a a different visual representation of of this okay. um this is obviously on the chart and then this is um you know basically a dom and um, i like this because it can help you quickly identify like big support and resistance levels um typically where there's a ton of demand like here at 33k that can be a nice support area. So you could come out on the chart here and you can just, you know, see why that's a support area. So, um, you know, this is obviously at this low here. So there's a lot of people waiting for this area to get snagged again to fill their, their bids. Um, and and there's a good chance that it would get it, it could come back down here at some point. Um, it just depends, really. But yeah, it's always it's always good to sort of mark out 
um, real, I, I regard this as real support and resistance levels. Like it's the most accurate representation of support and resistance levels that you can find. Um, so, so it's, it is useful to, to mark them out. We've see we've got another one here at 38 K, which is on the offer side. So we can see that we've got that fatty bid up there. Um, and it's quite easily um, visually um, representable here because you can see it here. You can see that's the big order there, right there at 30, 38K. So there's some downward pressure here. Um, this is questionable, you know, if we're going to get past this or not, if we're going to come down and, 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 and uh, start filling these bids lower. We'll see. The big, the big question. We're all waiting. Yeah, the million dollar question, right? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, that's the joy of trading. Everything's based off of probabilities and uh, yeah. Um, Let's see. Ashley, can you give me a quick update on um, if you can take a look at AVAX to see what you think it's going to do. I'm pretty heavy into it right now. See if, what you think it's uh, going to go up or down, or what the um, resistance is. Yeah, definitely. We can have we can have a look at it at the end. Uh, we, I'll, I'll just quickly go through this and then we'll jump straight into AVAX afterwards. All right. Thank you. Um, I just while we're in the middle of this, I wanted to um, show you guys the AI and how you can use it to help you with your trading, and you can even use it with TRDR. Uh, so, like, if you get a little lost along the way, and you know, I'm not around to ask a question. I basically trained the AI to know all of this information. I've I've uh, I've given it all the documentation, so it's really really smart. And I I just want to show you that now because um, I think that's going to be good fun. Um, let me I'm getting blocked by this panel up here on the top so I can't actually find my tabs. There. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So I'm super excited about this. This is absolutely dope. Um so you can basically you can copy and paste the chart image into the Honey Badger AI, and you can ask it questions. So I said, what did you see here? And it gave me, you know, all the different things here, the volume and order book data, potential support and resistance, timeframes, etc. So I wanted to see, can it read a DOM? And it looked at it, and it could read the DOM. It said, there you go. You've got the bids on the left side, which are represented by the green color. You've got the asks on the right side, which is shown in red. You've got the support levels, which can be identified by a high number of bids concentrated at a particular price level. And then it tells me what's in the image, support areas, resistance areas. Now, it shied away from my question I wanted to know exactly where the support and resistance was based off of the large bids and offers. And I had to just say, gun to your head, map out the areas with the most support and resistance based off of this image. <laughs> so I had to just put the gun to the AI's head because it was like, you know, it was beating around the bush a little bit. I'm like, okay. Tell me where the damn 
stuff is. So it was like so it went back to the analysis. The support levels where the significant number of bids in the image to look for areas where there's a dense concentration of green bars. Correct. The largest green bar represents the highest concentration of buy orders, which could indicate a strong support level. In this case, there's a particularly prominent green bar at the price level that appears to be just above 34,500. Boom. Amazing. There was a cluster there of bids, and then it did the same here on the offer side. Um, so a really, really cool. If you ever get stuck looking at this, then just simply go to, you know, you know come over to the TRDR ch uh, chart, copy it, paste it into here and ask it a question. And you will then get a full breakdown um, with this trained AI of, 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 of what, what it is, um, which I think is fantastic. Um, I'm really, really happy about that. So just want, I just wanted to throw that in there to sort of assist you further on your trading journey. Oops. Well, I look forward to it when you when I can finally get on. I don't know how long that uh, waiting list is going to be for. Yeah, you know what I can do? Um, I'm going to be able to take my AI and embed it into a website. So uh, effectively, I could just like you know bring it bring it off and 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 have it as a widget somewhere, you know, um, something like that. So if it, if it, if it's if the wait list takes forever, then we'll, we'll find some kind of workaround. We'll get it on get it on Rose Tree or something. Um, chance, go ahead. I'm assuming yes, but is the is the increments on that order book adjustable? Um, I'm asking because I'm from the perspective of building the bull market portfolio versus trading in any kind of capacity where you're just stacking your portfolio. So if you see that big line like that AI said it was at 34.5. So if I come in at like 34 499 will mine get filled before that big chunk or do i have to adjust those increments inside that order book um to be able to hit before they hit oh, you want you want to you want to front run them right yeah that's what i'm saying like on a on a building the portfolio thing um, what is the increment that would safely front run them can you adjust that in that order book depends on your order size <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't worry about front running if it, if you're not talking about, you know, order sizes of over twenty, thirty million. So should be okay. Um, okay, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, look, it's a valid question because sometimes the. Um, if the order sizes are too big in the order book, then they don't get filled. So, and that's because there's a whole bunch of guys trying to perhaps front run and they've got the exact same thinking of you. So when you see these glaringly huge bids or offers in the order book, then um, they, they, they often, they don't get filled. So, you know, that's one of the nuances of, um, looking at the order book data and you know you you may decide that you want to look in on the five minute chart and see a shift in pattern structure or you might want to wait until the lucky 23 is, is has crossed in your favor or, or you know there may be an additional um, indicator that you may want to use for act, actually executing your trades um, when you reach a point of interest, um, rather than just getting in purely based off of the order book. And, and, and this is important. Um, uh, it's a good, good question because you don't want to be trading just purely off of the order book. Oh, there's a, there's a bid there. So I'm going to front run it. And that's going to be my base case for getting into the trade. No, you want to, you know, start 
building up a strategy and and uh you know really building that stuff you know building building up a strategy to to increase your probabilities that you you're going to get into a winning trade um and i think that's the best way of looking at it um let's i i'm pretty much um done on this front um we're gonna get we're gonna jump into altcoins so we're going to dive into avax now and have a look at avax uh because um we've got danny b who's balls deep in avax so we need to look at it urgently before he gets liquidated <laughs> so avax to me looks Pretty good. I like it. We can have a quick look at deeper order book deck. That looks really, really good. Looks bullish. Doesn't look too bearish. Still a fair bit of demand coming in here. Nice demand as well here, deep into the order book deck. And um, yeah, I mean, generally speaking, this uptrend looks like it could continue um, and we might even be formulating a kind of a a bullish sort of flag or pennant or whatever you want to call it um here which you know may may end up resolving to the upside so we could see this break and then we could see this continuation here um but yeah i mean generally speaking this this looks pretty positive danny so i wouldn't worry about it it looks like we could uh we could break this out to the upside especially if bitcoin goes sideways for a bit longer um you know just 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 to uh zoom out a little bit and go on the daily um you know obviously we got in down here at nine dollars if if you if you got in around here and you still got some of that position riding i wouldn't worry about it um this is literally in the disbelief phase right now and this has got a whole lot more to give you know i i think this is going to go all the way back up to 100 bucks so you know i wouldn't worry about it um unless you like super super leveraged or something so my liquidation is 14 so i i think i'm good let's have a look at 14 oh yeah you're good all right thanks brother yeah you're good you're really really good um I'm going to wrap it up there and just allow any more questions that want to be asked. Um, Robert, go ahead. Hey, Ash, thanks. This is great. A little mind dizzying, but I'm, I'm following it. I'll probably watch this back. But regarding AVAX, I did my, um, my initial portfolio allocation. I only did 1%, and that was a little over, I think it was about $10.30-ish. Yeah. Um, and uh, I might want to do 2% instead of 1%. Are you looking for any pullbacks on AVAX? To uh, like, where would, what would be a price target that we should be looking at if we wanted to go another uh, percentage for the bull market portfolio? Like if I wanted to do a 1%. It's hard to see a pullback with this level of order book depth right now. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Um, yeah, it's kind of tricky. Um, yeah. I mean, if it goes to 100 from this point, it's a 5x. So, you know, that's fantastic. But, um, maybe I'll wait for the next market pullback that Zach was saying, maybe we're a week or two away from, and I'll be watching it. And then maybe I'll do my one more, 1% more 
allocation for my yeah. bull market portfolio yeah. allocation. The thing is, is Bitcoin look can look bearish, but altcoins can still be bullish. Um, you know, because we're in different market, you mm. know, different parts of the market cycle. Um, you know, so but so Bitcoin bearish is basically sideways right now. Um, until it kind of regains momentum. I think Bitcoin's probably in some kind of reaccumulation somatic for the next move up, but it's hard to time, right? So you know, you've got these altcoins that are in really early stages of their bull market um, that can continue to go up. Um, and, and, you know, uh, Avax is probably one of those that is just going to keep on giving um based off of this data that i'm currently seeing obviously i need to have a bit of a deeper dive into it but you know it's possible that this could just keep on giving um you know and let leave everybody sidelined and 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 wanting to get in um you know this happens a lot when there's a really strong move up you see oh my god you know it's gone up a hundred percent and I can't get in here because it's too dangerous. And that is the definition of the, of disbelief. You know, you, you really don't want to get in. But when you zoom out, I don't know if you can see. Can you see my trading view now? Can you see my trading view chart? Uh, right now I see Wicked Bet. Okay, so let's have a look at AVAX. I remember when it was trading like in the $8 range and I think the next support level was, I don't know, $4 or $3. So there was a lot of hesitancy to jump in at that point. And then I was so thrilled with the trade that you posted and I, I definitely made nice returns on that one, but I didn't, I only did 1% of my bull market allocation, bull market portfolio allocation. Yeah. Well, I did say that it was time to go in heavy. <laughs> you know anyway. what? And that was probably my disbelief and their market PTSD. But I learned my <laughs> lesson. Anyway, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. There's. We're just at the very beginning of of this bull market, so it really doesn't matter. Um, right now, we're formulating uh, this pattern here which is kind of like, uh, you know, it's kind of like this sort of, you know, where we've broken down this downward resistance. We did have a retest of it, and now we're just going to continue up to fill this liquidity void. So this is likely to continue up, you know, another 100% from here to around $40. And it and it and it's gonna be all all gas no breaks, you know. It's gonna be, uh, it's just gonna be like that from now on, uh, probably because all the dips are gonna be very very shallow. So, like when you're feeling uncomfortable about about getting into a position like this here, because it's gone up so much already, you're better off not taking any leverage and just taking a spot position and you know carefully allocating not going all in even on your spot position and if it comes down a bit you know what you know sometimes what people like to do is they like to do a TWAP so it's time weighted um, allocation and you just buy as long as it doesn't go over the price of 24 every time every day that it's under the price of 24 you buy a small allocation each day, no matter what the price is. And if it goes below a certain point, you get invalidated. So if it goes back below this support line, which was resistance, your whole entire position is invalidated. So it's a simple trade, you know, it's like, okay, you know, you, you, you're in spot, yes, you are exposed to some potential drawdown at this point, but if you if you if you're DCAing around here, you could minimize that drawdown to a degree. And if it goes up, happy days, you've got some extra exposure. 
If it goes down, you have your invalidation point. And it's always important to have at least some kind of invalidation point. Um, and, and then just, you know, just hold the spot and walk away and just wait for either one of these two areas to be hit. Simple as. What goes on in between is extremely difficult to determine. You know, for example, we saw that pennant, it could break up, it could break down again, it could come down, it could do this and then go up, you know, who knows. At this point, it's difficult to uh, know. Uh, the data is, what I'm seeing is slightly, like it looks more, more probable that this is just going to be all gas no breaks and to continue going up at least from here um but you know that's just what i'm seeing you know the, the probability is higher but it doesn't necessarily have to happen anything can happen so you just have to you know adjust your risk according to your own tolerance and and, and what you want to sort of risk basically I, I got it. That makes sense. And, and putting in those orders on spot, it's something that, um, you know, before we started trading on, before I started trading on the centralized exchanges, doing it on DeFi, you just have to be in front of your computer at the right time to make the buy. But now that I'm getting more comfortable in trading, having that option to just put it in order and not have to worry about it. If it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to have that investment account and the trading account really separate and have a different mindset for each one. So depending on which one you're in, you're 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 putting your money into. Um obviously you're gonna have different invalidation points depending on whether you're on a leveraged account or if you're on a spot account. And I'm talking about a spot account here specifically. So just bear that in mind. Um, you know, uh, Danny, he's obviously leveraged. He's got liquidation at around 14. Um, so, so he's, he's going to have a different approach to how he's going to trade this. Um, so yeah.